Hi, my name is Teresa McGarry and welcome to The Financial Fix. Success Story Spotlight guest today is Shayla Rogers and we have a special visitor with us here, Max. Hi Shayla, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you Teresa? Pretty good, apparently I'm getting kisses. <laughs> That's awesome. Mwah! Let's see, you and I met through a vehicle repair? Yes. Is that how we got started? That is very true. So what was going on? Do you remember? Um, I actually was driving home from work and hit a curb and I uh, didn't have the finances to fix my car. And I was told about a program um, through Christian Brothers Automotive mm -hmm. um, that they had a, a partnership with um, you to help um, individuals who needed a hand up, not a hand out, um, to help them get back on their feet. And in my case, it was for, if I didn't have my car, I couldn't work. Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom, three kids. And so if you can't work, I, you don't get a work, paycheck, I, you can't yeah. pay the bills, then you're homeless. Yes. Yep. And so it was imperative that I get my car fixed. So um, that's how we met. Yep. Yeah. That's about. So, as a single mom, who have you worked with other nonprofits before, and what was it kind of like, and how does that differ from working with Money Talk? I have worked with some other agencies. Um, this one's different. Uh, they require you to bring a whole bunch of paperwork in, have a formal interview, um, kind of make you feel that you're below other people. Um, and here it's just kind of laid back. You just get to talk. <laughs> and, um, you know, I can call you and say, Teresa. I don't have any money for food. I have my kids next week. And you're like, okay, let's see what we can do. Or, oh my gosh, I, I just, I can't take this right now and just have someone to talk to. And it's a totally different environment than a typical agency. I've never thought of myself as an agency. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you well. are. True. I mean, you're True. you're building yourself, so I mean, you you really are an agency per se. I mean, you're providing lots of different services to people. Yeah. You may be the only one working, but you have some behind the scenes people helping you out too. Yeah. Oh. I'm working on changing that. Yeah. So, do you like it being a hand up, not a hand out? I do. I love it. Um, a handout is, uh, you know, it, it almost feels like you're begging for services and you have to explain yourself and you have to somehow prove that you're worthy of getting that money versus somebody else. But a handout is... Okay, so you're in a financial crisis right here, right now, and if you get this, then it'll make you stable until your next paycheck, and then things go back to normal. And then we look at different resources to make things better, um, whether it be apply for food stamps or apply for um, some kind of grant through the government or whatever it may be. Um, I like the, the, that way better than just being looked at as a number. I don't even have numbers for people. Yeah. They're all in there as a name. <laughs> it's your person. Yeah. And you are of value. You're not just a check mark on a list or a Ooh, this many clients gets me this much money or government money or anything because we don't mm -hmm. get any of that. Um, I don't want any of that. Um, yeah, you're a person with a life and, and uh, you're someone of value and you need to be treated that way in my, in my mind. 
that, you know, just because things are, just because there's a financial struggle mm -hmm. or stress stuff going on, yep. as we all have, um, yes. uh, that we just need someone around to support us. And if I have the means to help, then fantastic. If not, let's get you in contact with someone who does. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm glad to hear that because it's never my goal to make somebody feel like they have to humble themselves or feel bad or feel looked down on because they need to say, hey, Teresa, I need help with gas money this week or, or whatever it might be. So. Well, even today, I've, I've said, hey, Teresa, have a really tight squeeze right now until next payday and you didn't even bat your eyes. And, and you, you made sure that I make it through until next Friday. And I wasn't even asking. And that's just how you are. And I love it. Well, I know you're genuinely working toward becoming financially stable. I know that you are um, very careful with your money. I know that you are um, willing to learn new things. I know that you are, you know, you're doing a great job of... Um, Re reusing, repurposing, um, doing Instacart <laughs> and some things along the side to make yeah. extra money when you can on the weeks you don't have your kids with you. And um, you're just, you're really working towards becoming financially stable. And so I have no problem at all saying, yeah, what store do you want me to get a gift card from? Or, you know, I'll meet you there. You can do your shopping and I'll, I'll we'll just pay for it at the register if you need it right then and there, or, um, you know, what kinds of things do you need? I'll run to the store and drop it off. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, or your car was in the shop. And I so it was like, to work or yeah. a ride home. I don't, it was, I think Tammy took you there. I brought, and I went, you, I came and you, picked you yeah, up. Yeah. You, you got the late end of the shift at 11 o'clock. Eh, I'm a night owl. It works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd like to, you know, take me to my shift now. Is it midnight? Uh, <laughs> I could do it. It wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. But because uh, we've had a lot of late nights here recently too, so yeah, that's cool. So I, yeah, I, I have no problem at all. I know when you tell me that you you're struggling with something or you're short on something or um, you're just even if you're just venting to me like you were earlier today, mm -hmm. it's it's like well I can't necessarily solve that problem but I can at least help this way, which will still help at least reduce that stress. I can't take the other stress away other than having a friend and, and a listening ear and supportive where I can. But as far as the financial concern of it and being able to say, hey, here's, here's the money you need to cover this bill and to put gas in your car for the next week. And I mean, yeah, I watched <laughs> I just turned around and walked off while you were talking. You did. And I came back and I said, here, I know you didn't ask for it, but you're taking it. I know, and I was surprised. That I, I was like, thank you. You really were? You yeah. didn't know that's what I did. was no, doing? No. Oh, wow. Uh -uh. Okay. I just thought you were going to get something. No, had no clue. Well, surprise. Thank you. Um. I appreciate it. My car appreciates it. Oh, yes. My, my checking account really appreciates it. Yeah, and I bet your bosses will appreciate you actually making it to work, too. So. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, Uber is expensive. Yes, it is. And yeah. that's not what you need to be spending your money on because you don't have any to spare in that no. regard. So, no. especially now as a single mama with three. Mm -mm. So, yeah. I think um, I remember the day that you uh, had something to give me. I don't remember what, but I was Instacarting at... Um, oh grocery uh, all these gift cards yes mm -hmm. and so uh you wanted you wanted to see what instacarting was so you uh just joined me and i showed you what i needed and you and I, off you yeah. went and you came went. back and said is this the right thing <laughs> shayla yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and so i taught you how to instacart that, day. that, was, that was a fun day yeah that was yeah yep. i'm looking forward to when you're able to get your own place the laundry facility that you've talked about. So how would that be helpful for you? Tell, um, me, tell me what you got to do now. I have to drag all my laundry down 
three flights of stairs to the washing machines in my apartment building and it's a dollar fifty to wash and a dollar fifty to dry and you can't start both washers at the same time because then it floods the basement floor no. so you have to wait for one to load all the way like and start its its cycle and then you can start the other one currently we only have one washing machine because the other one's broken it's filled with water and they haven't fixed it. So now we're down to one washing machine in our building. Yeah. So my other option is to go to this awesome place in Mission, I wish I could remember, but um, they have huge uh, washing machines, like the commercial ones, mm -hmm. 60 pounds for $7, which really isn't that bad, but that's $7 worth of money. To wash your clothes. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you were to do that, how many, between you, your roommate, and three kids, how many loads of laundry would you need to do? Um, I normally do, if I do it that way, then I let it pile up. <laughs> and it's about $40 to wash so and dry. That's a little bit more than a week's worth of gas in your car. It is. Depending on the price of gas at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that put a week of gas in your car so that you can get back and forth to work and that it's you spent time out of my day um so and then there's you don't only have to haul the laundry but you also have to haul the laundry detergent and if yeah. you use like oxyclean and any scent boosters and and dryer sheets and yes softener and you know all of that you got to haul i mean for me that would be almost a whole trip down the stairs just carrying that stuff. I try to stuff all mine in my baskets and bags, but then it becomes too heavy. And since I have uh, fibromyalgia, that's <laughs> too much weight to carry down the stairs. And I tend my to- My knees wouldn't do it. My I tend to just drag too much down anyway, because I don't want to make the trips up and down the stairs five times. So sometimes when the kids are there, I'm like, hey, can you help me carry a load of laundry downstairs? And they will. And they, happily just you know and then they learn how to count out the money and so we do a little bit of learning with our washing and drying which is kind of nice everything's a teaching opportunity absolutely if you, if you can teach Inside. them how to do their laundry teach them how to you know count the quarters to make a dollar and that is what my daughter does right now she she's in second grade or actually she's becoming a third grader because we're almost out congratulations yay um but she, you know, she went from, I have money, but I don't know what it means. And she's very thrifty and frugal with her money, which is awesome. She always has money in her purse for some reason. And the boys, they don't. They haven't quite figured that out yet, huh? No, the 10 year old, as soon as he has money, mom, can we go to Dollar Tree? How about you save your money for me? No, but I can buy five things for my $5. We gotta put tax in there too. And he does not think of those things. So. You'll get in there, Mom. <laughs> <sighs> One day. But I want him to learn, like, you know, he's always asking for, can I have some some V-Bucks for, uh, what's that game he plays? Um, Fortnite. And what he doesn't realize is that his V-Bucks cost money to me cost real money yeah. real money and he could be saving his money to give to me to buy his v bucks so he did that once and then he realized how expensive it was and then he hasn't really asked for them since then <laughs> well good for you making him use his own money to buy his own v bucks for the game because yeah. um he's he needs to get that yeah connection in his head yep so yeah it's one of the things that i want us that I want to do when we get our own space. Now, I've been doing a lot of brainstorming, me, myself, and I, since mm -hmm. this all started back in 2012, and it's now 2021, so we're coming up on 10 years from the time that the whole, God said, this is what you're gonna do. And so I'm, I'm getting a little, I don't know, uncreative or something. So I'm calling it an incentive store, and it needs a much better name. I also need a different term than clients because I don't like that, that it has more of the, icky agency you're a number feel than 
than than the feel that you were talking about earlier. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't like that. But um, like I said, I'm you know creativity wise, I just nothing's hit me yet. So um, I'll have to think about that one for you. Go for it. Love it. Okay. Um, so this incentive store. Um, a simple way to describe it is like Chuck E. Cheese. So you purchase the coins, you go play skee-ball, you get the tickets, you take the tickets up to the countertop and you buy stuff and you get to buy whatever depends, whatever you buy is based on how many tickets you got. Or you can save them for the next time kind of thing. Well, what I want to do with the incentive store is kind of along those lines, only it's not stuff you're going to end up throwing in the trash or breaking them instantly, hopefully. Um, the idea is that anything and everything that you do to work towards financial stability. So you're volunteering to do this video for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other volunteer stuff you're doing, like when you did the Instacart video to teach everybody about Instacart and mm -hmm. what it's like to do it and, and all, which is sitting on our YouTube channel for anybody who would like to find it. Uh, as long as your referral code, yes. <laughs> um, so the single mama here will get um, some referral cash for that to help her out. Um, but uh, you're doing financial coaching. You've attended uh, the literacy workshop. You um, you created your budget. You stuck to it. You paid your bills on time. Opened a bank account. You were able to add money to your savings account, at, which at some point I would like to be able to match. Um, not there yet, but I'd like to. Um, you know, anything that you're doing, mm -hmm. if you're helping out a fundraiser or something, to be able to earn, and again, need some creativity. <laughs> I hear money talk money or right. money talk credit. And then you get to go to this incentive store. And the incentive store is all brand new stuff. Awesome. So you get to choose how you want to spend those credits in that incentive store. And that's where I'm thinking, like you were talking earlier about needing bed sheets and a comforter, or it's towels, or it's a microwave, it's a toaster, it's a vacuum, it's, um, I don't know, we could end up having new shoes and coats or right. something, or um, dishes, whatever. Uh, that's something that I plan on talking to everybody about and just kind of say, what kinds of things would be, would you want to have in there to choose from? Because I don't want to just go out and buy, you know, bed sheets and towels when it's like, well, I'd really like to be able to get a microwave that works. Oh yeah. You know, so, you know, I want to have stuff in there that's stuff that would be helpful. Right. Um, and so there's multiple things there. And uh, one is that um, going from financially struggling to being financially stable is not an overnight. It's not a, I give you a checklist of three things to do and tomorrow, poof, you're financially stable. doesn't work that way. <laughs> there's, yeah. a, there's a long process of, of that. And this is one way to kind of provide some additional support along the way. Um, and while everything we do is a hand up, not a handout, there's also everything we do is with the um, intention and design of building somebody's self-esteem, helping them improve their self-confidence, empowering them to stand on their own two feet. Because yeah. um, if we don't heal the inside, and I don't mean a clean gut and stuff like that, yeah. which is also important. I'm talking about the mind, the, and soul. the, mind, the soul, the um, healing from the effects of abuse and all of those kinds of things and the self-doubt and all of that if we if we don't heal that then teaching you the book knowledge of this is how to create a budget this is how you know if you planned on fifty dollars and you spent 45 you have five left that it's way more than that and but what a single mom that i had met a while back she uh she's not single now but she and her husband are have we're doing our roof but one thing she was telling me that really got me that I hadn't really thought about because I never was a single mom. So um, I'm grateful for that. But at the same time, you know, I don't exactly have that perspective. So I'm learning. But getting something new for her family was 
a huge self-confidence, self-esteem thing for her as opposed to bringing home something used. And then there was also knowing that she worked for it mm -hmm. and earned what she brought home for her family. And it wasn't just given to her out of pity. And how much difference that made for her self-esteem and self-confidence and knowing that she had something of value to give, even if it was volunteer hours. And it just, I really hadn't ever thought about it that way. Um, until she had pointed that out. And so there's that aspect too, because that, that's brand new stuff that you have earned through right. working towards financial stability. Um, there's also, it becomes a real life budget lesson because in, you, you now yourself, and it's not, you know, oh, if I make a mistake, I won't have enough money for rent or, or whatever. I mean, cause there's no actual money, money there's, and it's, the stuff is really free. You're just, you have to earn the credits to purchase it, so to speak. Um, but still, you know, do I want this one thing or do I want these two over here? Or do I want to save up for this other thing over here? Or, you know, you get to make right. and practice those budgeting skills in an environment where you're getting brand new good, good stuff. You've actually earned it. It's not like play money. Uh, and it's not pretend. Um, and you have control over how much you have to spend based on the choices that you made. Which leads me to the third big benefit is for some of our folks, that whole concept of if you don't work, you don't get, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're talking about with your son, which is what led me on this tangent, um, <laughs> yes. is so, I'm, I'm hoping that that really helps with the work ethic, the work readiness piece of it when we get a chance to start that piece and helping some of, especially some of those youth that haven't really learned it or seen it um, demonstrated by their parents, which is not the situation at your house. They've definitely seen it. Right. But some house, some kids that I've worked with, um, that's, not the, that's not the example that they get set at home, unfortunately. So if we don't help them learn a work ethic, they're not gonna be employable. And a lot of them want to start their own business, but if you can't hold down a job, like show up every day and actually work, there is no way you're going to successfully start a business because yeah. it is way more work and responsibility. Yeah, it is. So there's a lot of things about that that I'm really excited about. Um, but sorry, I took us off on a tangent. That's one no, thing that, you're fine. that I'm looking forward to that I'm excited about. No, I, I, I like that idea. Um, the, you know, you're always looking for help finding uh, ways to improve uh, your nonprofit. You're looking for grants, you're looking for funding, you're looking for uh, people to volunteer, you're looking for advice, you're looking for any kind of resources. And you Businesses found, to partner and collaborate with. You yeah. found one, one creative person uh, <laughs> who has has a wide source of uh, knowledge with resources around Kansas City due to some of my uh, past work yes. history. Which means you'll be on this show a few other times <laughs> and some different series besides just the success yeah. story spotlight. So yes, 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 yes. That will be fun. Yeah. Um, um, and I, yeah, and I try to find I, the re resources that I'm providing, I'm trying to make sure that I do it in such a way that it doesn't cause you to lose or reduce any benefits that you're getting from other more government type. Yes. Um, because that is so, in my mind, it's very critical to try and protect that because we don't, we don't want to give you a little bit of help and then they start pulling the rug out from underneath you. And so you're either staying in place or, or and treading water or you're losing ground. Right. And we want to make sure that we're adding to but not in a way that causes you to lose the other, so. Right. I, um, to go back on, on my story, I had to start from ground zero. And uh, that was in uh, April of uh, 2020. Um, I, had to make a big decision and I had to leave my husband who had taken my, our three children due to 
domestic violence. I went to jail instead of him. I took the charges instead of him. But I have the proof. Yeah, you weren't the one that was doing the abuse. No, I wasn't. And still aren't. No. And I've learned a lot. And uh, I realized how I could have gotten out of my situation a lot sooner. But when you're stuck in it and you don't see it from an outside perspective like you do as a case manager, what I used to do, it's totally different. And to look back a year ago, how far I've come is unreal. I've come off of a couple of my medications. Yay! <laughs> I'm completing um, therapy. And it's reduced from weekly to maybe once a month because, you know, I don't need it all the time anymore. I'm not relying on my therapist. Um, my mental health case manager, uh, she, she's there for me, you know. I can text her and say, hey, I have a question or, oh my gosh, I'm having a really hard time. And that was this week. I said, do you have time to talk? And I had just had an appointment with her, but I had something on my mind and it was really important. And she said, you're in luck. My client didn't show up today. Um, what's up? Give me a call. I mean, how God works sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> I was so grateful for that too, because I needed to get it off my chest and I needed to talk to somebody about it. Mm -hmm. And it was mental health related and and she led me in the right direction and, and, you know, helped me realize that, you know, sometimes, you know, when we make a med change, it's not, you're not always going to feel that way. Or you're, you know, when you come off of a medication, sometimes you feel differently. And I recently came off of a medication and so, um, you're experiencing some of I'm, those I'm experiencing changes. some of those changes, and yeah. so I'm learning the new me, you know, just like I was learning the new me a year ago of, I'm that single. That just amazes me that it's only been a year. It seems it, like... Yeah. 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 Wow. I, I, I was a stay-at-home mom, um, hadn't worked uh, in close to 10 years, except for a couple jobs here or there. I worked at the school district for one year and my um fibromyalgia was getting the best of me due to stress now due didn't to the your the, the fact that you were a stay-at-home mom which i'm really grateful that you were able to do that and i'm sure your kids are too mm -hmm. um which added to his controlling because he could be more controlling that way but didn't that when you chose to leave cause and I'm trying to remember some of our conversations mm -hmm. that there were some benefits that you didn't qualify for because you didn't have enough work credits or something like that yes. because you've been stay at home. Um, so I lost my active work credits for social security, social security. Um, when I tried to apply for social security disability, I used, um, the Kansas legal aid. I was like, Oh, what's the name of that? <laughs> Uh, Kansas Legal Aid, and the first time I had applied by myself, I did all my own paperwork, turned it in, was denied. And they said I didn't have enough work credits, so I thought, well, maybe I'll use an attorney. And I, everyone kept telling me, oh, it takes several times to apply, and you'll eventually get it. That wasn't mm -hmm. really truly the case. It's not always that you're going to get it. It's, there's, sometimes there's sticky situations like mine. I was a at home mom, uh, homemaker, and when you don't work for X amount of years, they start taking off your active work credits. And so I needed five active work credits, and they had been deleting them since 2015. So I was short active work credits from when I applied when I was married, and then, uh, I was already short. They were, so they, you still have those credits, but they're not active anymore. So you, you, in order to qualify for some benefits, you have to show that you were recently working and were affected by 
your disability. So even today, if I went and applied for disability for either my mental or physical, um, I would be denied because I still don't have enough active work credits. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing what we can to help. But, you know, sometimes you got to look at things from a different perspective. Um, one of the good things um, that my case manager did for me recently was um, put me in contact with a um, another case manager for the, uh, for job resources. Mm -hmm. So she's working with me to um, actually help me find a new job that's not so taxing on my body in the mental sense because right now I'm working overnight hours. Yeah. So when you work overnight hours and you have a mental disability, you don't get any sleep, you, you go into psychosis eventually. Well, in the weeks that you have your kids, then I have to they stay went awake. In, yep. Yeah. And helping with school and mm -hmm. everything else that's going on. Yep. And it's, yeah. it's really hard um, because I'll come home from work at 8.30 in the morning and I get home around 9.00. Um, they're in school already for an hour, um, and I stay up until mm -hmm. I can't keep my eyes open anymore, which is about two o'clock in the afternoon, and I might sleep only two hours, and I'm up making dinner, and getting them showers, and braiding hair, or reading <laughs> books, or, you know, trimming fingernails and toenails times three. <laughs> Um, or ha the grocery haircuts, store, yeah, help whatever, with homework, yeah, R yeah, yeah, and and then I realize it's bedtime, and uh, by the time I get to bed, it's it's an hour before I have to go to work, so I literally run on maybe three hours of sleep the week. Nah, you run on two naps. You run on a two-hour nap and a one-hour nap. That's yeah. not the same as three hours altogether. No. <laughs> But that's how I count it. It's, mm -hmm. oh, I got three hours of sleep yesterday. And people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. And I went, and I was one that never used uh, energy drinks. Mm -hmm. And uh, try not to now, but at night, sometimes I have to have an energy drink. And I realize coffee is not my best friend at night. It gives me really bad heartburn. Mm. So... But energy drinks and coffee during the daytime, I might use because I gotta stay awake, especially for a kindergartner. Yeah. <laughs> Who fidgets and wiggles. As kindergartners do. Yeah. That's a lot of work. And it's very taxing. And that's the second job all by itself is to be a, a stay at home virtual learning household <laughs> for eight hours and then go to work for eight and a half hours and then come home and do it again yeah. and again and again and again thankfully i have then one more week of school yay and then the next week their other dads and school's out so <laughs> no more school after this next week so i'm very excited that'll help yes but then you get your kids through them. I'm excited about that, though. Even though it sounds a little stressful, I played softball for many years. I love baseball. I was assistant coach for my older son's team a couple years ago. Um, never coached by myself before, <laughs> so this is a new experience. So I might be, you know, asking parents, hey, I need some help. Well... But, you know... If they want their kids on the team, they can help. They can step up and help with but, small things. You know, the thing was is that the my son's team wouldn't be able to play if a parent didn't step up and volunteer mm -hmm. their time to coach the kids. And this is how society is today, is no one wants to take that responsibility. You know, oh, it's not a paid position. I don't want to do it. 
sometimes they need to step back and look at the bigger picture. I just got an email saying that my son's not going to get to play baseball if they, we don't have a coach. Mm. Of course I'm going to step up, even if I'm dead dog tired. <laughs> and I did. I immediately mm -hmm. responded to the email and said, I'll do it. But there's an incentive to it. But at the, at the end of it, I get a credit on my account refunding my money for paying for his t-ball yeah, to be so his coach good. so there was a benefit to it but that's not why i did it no because it, i mean all the benefits for him as well as the teammates for mm -hmm. getting to play ball and learn how to play on a team and oh yeah all those kinds of things so. absolutely and luckily you know t-ball is more or less just watching a lot of cute little kids running around the bases and <laughs> picking grass and clovers out of the outfield. <laughs> you know, swing and miss on the tee, the, the tee and, you know, everyone running towards the ball in one direction. It'll as long be as fun. they don't run backwards around the bases, if you're okay, right? I would be even okay if they did it that way. But, you know, it'll be fun. It will be. Yeah. So I'll have to come watch a game or two. Yes. So what, when Money Talk gets around space, what other kinds of things are you looking forward to? Um, I know you were looking at maybe putting in, like, not an internet cafe type thing, but, like, you know, a resource where people can come and use the computer, print things off. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. um, kind of a workroom? Yeah, workroom. Kind of a... Um, so, I always have a fight with my computer versus the the uh, printer. So, <laughs> maybe I can come to, come to your workshop and be able to print something and not have to get frustrated with my printer every time. Yeah. Well, and I've heard it can really add up if you, like, need to... Because uh, another lady... I've done a lot of printing for her before we got her a printer because otherwise it was, you know, go to FedEx or yeah. Walgreens or CVS or Walmart or, or wherever and then you pay so much a, a, yeah, it's a like side. 10 or 15 cents a page. Which doesn't sound like much, but no. Um, when your money is really super tight and if you think about, you know, just if you add all those little bitty things up, that actually adds up to a significant amount of money, just kind of like you we were talking about oop, um, the laundry. Mm -hmm. That adds up to enough to have put a tank of gas in your car for a week yeah. to be able to drive back and forth and w to work. So yep. um, that's one of those things I was talking about, trying to help out in ways that are helpful and supportive. It's what you need, but it doesn't adversely affect something else. So. Yeah. Or get mom a new cool. pair of work shoes because she's already walked the soles off of her yes work shoes <laughs> and, and we don't want you having back pain and fibromyalgia pain and yeah. all the other any more than is absolutely necessary yep. so if you're on your feet you need a good pair of shoes you do then let's get you a good pair of shoes so yep. yeah yeah so what else do you know what else is even coming i don't remember what all we've talked about um <laughs> i know in the past we've talked about um trying to find some fundraising events. I know mm -hmm. that we had talked with a, a corporation that yep. needs lots of volunteers and maybe that might work out. That would be kind of cool, but if yeah, you can't, I haven't heard back you can't count on that one. Um, trying to think. What about the drop-in shop? Because I've you've oh, donated yes. to the drop-in shop. I have drop. Yes. I you have, you've done the drop. I've done the drop. I haven't done the shop. I'm sure I will. What, when we get our own space and set up the shop, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll help yeah. you set up the shop. Um, oh, yeah. I so I, I have dropped off numerous times um, clothing. I have a box in my car for you. Sweet. We just got a storage unit because it was taking between the school supplies and backpacks and my other just daily stuff mm -hmm. and the drop and shop stuff. It My dining room was full. It was in my living room, my garage. It was... Yeah, yeah so I just broke house. down and, and got a storage unit. Yeah. Which I hate to pay for, but at the same time, I needed my living room back. 
Yes, <laughs> that's important. Um, so it was discouraging. I, yeah. But. Well, but it, hopefully it's short term. I hope so too. Yes. So the drop and shop will be good. Yeah. Um, Especially with three kids that are out growing clothes constantly. Yes. I had to recently purchase clothes for all three of them for springtime. And my oldest, who's 10, he didn't appreciate the fact that most of them came from the thrift store. And he said, I'm not wearing these because they're not brand new. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I'm not your father. And I said, you should be grateful for the things you were given. And you should be happy you have clothes that fit you here at your mother's house. And he said, oh, okay. <laughs> because his clothes were too tight. And he was complaining that they hurt his belly, you know they were too tight and so I just went and bought everyone the next size up spring clothes and everyone was happy but he had to make that comment like it really did make me feel bad like truly made me feel like I'm not good enough you know that mindset and yeah. right I don't make the money dad does um, I can't go to the mall and just buy him whatever he picks out he, you know, gets that from dad. He may not get that from me. But I also try and find things that are brand new at the thrift store for 75% off the price of something brand new. Yeah. So it takes more time. But in the mm -hmm. end, if you look at all the clothes and you look how much they wear them and they grow so quick. Having two boys, I saved all of my oldest son's things. Um, they're five years difference, I think. They're six years. They're, what, they're four or five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> eh, yeah. Give or take, you know. Um, but I saved all of my oldest son's clothes um, up until... We moved a couple years ago, and I realized I can just repurchase these things because it's taking up way too much storage. Mm -hmm. And I donated all of it to one of the local thrift stores and some to you and found homes for other things and, you know, used the Facebook swap sites and... Mm -hmm. um, but I saved up until size seven, eight. So I didn't have to buy boys clothes for years. And that was awesome. You open up a bag and go, yay, we have fall clothes. Yeah. And I don't have that anymore, but you know, it was nice. I kind of did that with my two girls. Yeah. Yeah. You never know what you're going to see when you, I, I try to, you know, piece them together so they have seasons and sizes and so I know which one is which mm -hmm. but sometimes it wouldn't get put away right and I'd have to dig through a whole bag but I was I'm down to my last bag of stuff and that was kind of sad and so <laughs> now I have to buy for the the six-year-old clothes brand new and so that's been an adventure there because they're two different body styles too which yeah sometimes hand-me-downs don't work when no they don't when they're yeah two very different body styles mm -hmm. and then if they have very different tastes in the you know yeah not just body style but the style of clothes that yep that they like and you want them to even though it's donated clothes that you've purchased or with the drop and shop that you just get for free yeah um, which I've had a lot of people mention they really like being able to donate the clothes to an organization that's going to give it mm -hmm. to somebody that needs it instead of sell it yep especially selling it to somebody who needs to use the money for basic needs kind of thing oh he's been and he just woke up he's been taking a nap oh um oh did you hear that whine yeah. he doesn't want me to move him it's like, oh, comfortable. <laughs> mom stop 
I so. th- I I like the idea because possibly, you know, depending on what the rules are, maybe I can bring my son with me and he can help pick out some of his yeah, clothes. Yeah, so. you know, he's older, so maybe he would be able to find some things he does like and and maybe have a fitting room or use the restroom to be able to try them on. I'm so, hoping to have a fitting room. So that we don't take things home that... My idea is that it's going to... Or the, the picture I have in my head is that it's going to be like going into a store store. Mm-hmm. Not a thrift store, but a store store. You know, where it's more of a, a round rack kind of thing. And, you know, the their things are kind of gathered, grouped together based on, you know, it's sports stuff, it's boys, it's girls, it's women's, it's men, it's right. winter, it's summer, whatever. Um, you know, some shelves on the wall where there's jeans by size or pants or shorts or whatever that are a little bit harder to hang up. Um, dressing rooms, uh, some little grocery carts. Oh, yeah. So you can push stuff around and you've got carts that you can put stuff in. Um, and we will also have a checkout register um, and that's mainly just for program management purposes and, and just to be able to say we've helped this many families with this many items kind of perspective. But it also lends itself to feeling more like you're going to a store yeah. by having to check out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, well, it yeah. also helps maybe with your inventory. Yeah. Which right now all I've tracked is, you know, this person on this date donated this many items and I haven't even tried to keep track of how many are shoes or pants or shorts or work clothes or purses, jewelry, belts, um, ties, Mm -hmm. stuff that you would need maybe if you were doing a job interview. Right. um, Oh yeah, that's that's very important. Yep. Um, I think I have some swimsuits in there. The only thing I don't have in there is underwear. There are some very nice, more expensive bras that are still in good shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, there are some things that just, in my mind, we don't need to hand down. <laughs> I don't know. Other clothes is, is it. <laughs> One is a food pantry, um, but not just food, mm-hmm. but also basic needs, toiletries, over-the-counter medications, oh feminine products, diapers and pull-ups that are so expensive. Yes. Um, and those kind, the things that aren't that you can't use the food stamps for, yep. but are still basic needs, really. Um, not too sure how we're going to handle anything cold or frozen, but or fresh produce kind of stuff. But um, that's something else. So would that be something that you would use that would be helpful? Yes, I would definitely go for the 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 non food things because I do receive food stamps. Um, not something I want to be on forever. You know, I hope right. one day that, you know, my my goals do come true and that... Uh, oh, we're we're going to get you there. Yeah, we're getting there. I, yeah. I did a lot already. and um, But, you know, get that house. Mm-hmm. That's my main goal, is to get that house. But... Uh, you know, get off food stamps, but I wish food stamps did provide toiletries. They're, yeah. Those are expensive. They are. You know, it, and going to the Dollar Tree and buying toilet paper. Well, it's well, it's horrible, you know, like, or going, you know, or buying the cheapest toilet paper or uh, toothpaste, you know, things. In this, I mean, yeah. they're yucky. You know? Well, and, and while I, I understand the, the you know, like going to, to Dollar Tree or something like that where everything is a dollar mm-hmm. type of thing, you know, if you only have a certain amount of dollars to spend, you can get a little bit of all the things that you need to get through the week. Yes. But when you look at what you're paying per thing or per ounce, depending on what it is, it's really a lot more expensive than it is. going to a Walmart, a Target, a, something like that, where you can buy it in regular size, for lack of a better term. I need to buy mine in bulk, um, and I haven't been able to make it to Costco yet. So, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. But everybody needs 
bath soap and toilet paper and toothpaste and um yeah those those kinds of things that's just that's just basic needs and and just mm -hmm. keeping yourself clean and and feeling good about yourself and and that kind of thing so that that's really important i think something neat for the food pantry side would be to have a small section for uh food allergy friendly oh definitely definitely um and that's one of the things about shopping being able to shop for the things is um being able to pick the things out that not only that you like and would eat and don't already have a bunch of at home but are things that you're not allergic to yeah because i have worked with other food pantries i've got a client that through covid we've i've taken to the food pantry several times and um yeah just to pop the trunk and they put in whatever they want in the back well mm -hmm. you know with between my food allergies and, and my older daughter <laughs> there's um pretty much if i can eat it she can't and vice versa yeah so it makes it really hard i shop the perimeter of the store which you oh yeah know, but you still have to be careful because a lot of that still yeah. with additives and, and different things are yeah. still things you can't have the cereal aisle is our main you know source of the middle of the store and then it's fruits and vegetables and meats but then we we use alternative milk and a lot of food pantries don't have alternative milk mm -hmm. um and then you know like alternative coffee creamer and stuff like that i'm also kind of thinking about some of the some other things that are frequently needed but are pretty expensive and and definitely not covered by food stamps would be you know to have batteries or oh, yeah. a lot of folks are it's like um buying the the patches to stop smoking yes and some of those kinds of things too that um would be very helpful to have and mm -hmm. very needed especially you know maybe we'll have an a uh, um an emergency awareness month or a time period maybe you know a couple because you're supposed to change the batteries in your smoke detector every six months well Maybe every six months, it's like, hey, come sometime this week and get a nine volt battery for every smoke detector in your house. Yes. And just provide that for everybody so they can be safe at home. Yep. With their smoke detectors working. Spring forward, fall back. Yeah. That's when you change your batteries. <laughs> yep, that's an easy way to remember it. Yep. Um, so, and, and maybe yes. look at, um, uh, I have a good idea teach a class on um, emer emergency preparedness for a natural disaster. We live in mm -hmm. Tornado Alley. Yep. Um, and I was I, part of our CERT team, our community emergency response team, when it initially started here in the city of Johnny, Kansas, mm -hmm. um, for five years. And uh, part of that was because of wanting to learn how to do that. And I'm trained as one of the trainers and well, whatnot. That's awesome. So that that's definitely something that I want to be doing because everybody needs to know mm -hmm. and everybody needs to be current on their first aid and CPR because you never know when somebody around you is going to have some kind of medical issue. Absolutely. I, I find looking for new jobs, you know, the, there's a look for people with certain certifications. Um, oh, okay. Um, and the ones I see the most are CPR and first aid, which I used to be an instructor for both of those and life and be a lifeguard instructor, but I've lost my certifications on all of them. You know, it'd be easy to go take the courses, but it costs money. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I love teaching first aid and, and CPR, um, but I still remember mine not certified, but. Well, know. it's surprising when you take the class to get recertified to get you know to get your certification renewed how the rules have changed and yes like now it's to the beat of staying alive and no yep. breaths yeah, I know. or at it's least crazy. the last one yeah I did it's, it's hands only no breathing and it's yeah i'm like what and probably um the other thing that i'm thinking of that might be very helpful for you is the backpacks and school supplies yes especially with three little ones in school yes and uh, you know, I know you had your sign up online. Um, it's still there. I haven't done it yet because um, I didn't know if we were going back to school or not. But well, we are still, now. They're still going to need yeah. a way to keep something oh like gosh. a backpack to keep all their stuff in. 
and they're still going to need the supplies whether they're doing school at home yeah. or school on site yeah um so that's another way that mm -hmm. we can help and yes. um i have access to be buying stuff in bulk at a discount which helps make the um money go a little bit farther mm -hmm and get more for the, the funds that are donated to cover that. So, yes. and I've got, actually, I've got a couple of organizations who they already have, like a church has an apartment complex that they work with, or one bank has a school that they work with. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, so we wanna, you know, go to the social worker and find out, okay, give me 20 or 30 families that need, that really need help. And we'll buy, we'll give, we'll, they'll provide the funds for me to go out and purchase the stuff and then we'll have some volunteers come in and we'll all get everything packed and delivered to the families and, that need it and, well, and whatnot. Awesome. So, yeah. And then the sign-ups on the website for yeah. whoever needs it. Yeah, I know um, in the Shawnee Mission School District, um, they have uh, the Harvesters back, back Snack program. So they get a... Uh, like, like a, a backpack, backpack of food for the uh, weekend. Yes. And that's always, I've utilized that in the past. That would be, that would be good. And I'm not I know, sure exactly how to make that work, but that would be good to do. Mm -hmm. At least find out how to do that. And I know um, a lot of schools this year have, you've been able to go, well, for the last two years, go and pick up school breakfast and school lunches mm -hmm. um, for the week. Uh, whether the children attend school or not so yeah because of COVID because of COVID um but you know having those kinds of resources on your website would be you know kind of cool um where you have just a resource center and uh people can go in and oh I'm looking for uh employment help and uh there might be a resource for that, or I'm looking for car repairs, and <laughs> you know, Christian Brothers. <laughs> you know, there, you yeah. know, there, it, there's a, there's a good need, I think, for a resource site on your page. Okay, I will, I will work on getting a resource section on the website. Yeah, probably under enroll because that's where clients most of their stuff mm -hmm. where they're looking for I want to sign up for a workshop or an academy or vehicle assistance or I want to sign up for backpack help or yeah. or whatever so I'd probably put the resources there under yeah. enroll so yeah because that'll catch their attention yeah well I am sure we are going to be seeing you again when we're talking about different resources or money saving tips and all those kinds of things, but I would just like to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be a guest and tell us your success story and be our spotlight person <laughs> for today on Financial Fix. And I have really enjoyed working with you and I look forward to continue doing that. And I have a feeling that once you get yourself financially stable, it's not like you're going to disappear. You're going to be still be involved and um, that's going to be awesome. Yeah.